Hello there. I want to take this time to invite you to join me for the next half hour for Minister in Warfare for the Lord. The title of my sermon, What You Secretly Do Late at Night, Would You Be Embarrassed and Ashamed to Be Seen Doing It in the Light of Day? You know, there's something that each and every one of us has encountered regardless of what your social or economic status may be in life. Each of us at one time in our life have become aware of their existence and unfortunately have been in their presence. And their existence can be dated back as far as 350 million years. And the being that I'm referring to is the common cockroach. And this little flat-bodied insect, whose length is anywhere from one-fourth of an inch to three inches long, is nocturnal in nature. In other words, it loves the nightlife. Because it's very active and it reaches its highest level of functioning during the nighttime. And yet, when they unexpectedly make their appearance known unto you, and especially late at night, it can create feeling of consternation on your part. Now, a classic example would be when you get out of bed early in the morning around 2 or 3 a.m., and you walk barefooted to the kitchen to get a glass of water, and suddenly you feel something under your foot. And as you feel that sensation, you also hear a crunching sound. And then when you turn on the lights and you look under your foot, you discover the squashed carcass of a cockroach that you had accidentally killed when you stepped on it only moments before. And then you begin to get that yucky and unpleasant feeling. And as you walk toward the kitchen table to get a napkin to wipe your foot off with, and then you look toward the table and you see what appears to be a relative of the cockroach that you had just killed. For it was scampering down the table. And as it raced across the kitchen floor, it disappeared into a small hole that heretofore you didn't know existed. Then as you looked back at the table, you saw that apple pie that your wife had cooked for you that evening, but you had left unwrapped. And suddenly you had no appetite for any apple pie in the foreseeable future. And although the cockroach's portion of the apple pie may have been very minute, you were steadfast determined not to share any of your apple pie or food with any cockroach. Now this unfortunate incident had conjured up within you feelings not only of disgust, but it also was accompanied by a very mild case of nausea. And scientists tell us that whether we want to admit it or not, or whether we know it or not, these unwanted neighbors are never totally out of our presence. For scientists say that every home, every restaurant, and every building has a small remnant of these undesirable guests, even though we do our very best to eradicate and to destroy them. And even though these cockroaches have a way of arousing disgust and anger toward them, Whenever they come unexpectedly into our presence, but that feeling of anger and disgust toward them is pale in comparison to the extreme dislike and aversion that develops when one is confronted with a five or six foot human version of the despised cockroach. But unlike the cockroach, whose mode of operation centers chiefly around a high intensity of activities being accomplished under the shroud of darkness and night, 
The human version of the cockroach is more dangerous and deceitful because he possesses a trait that enables him to blend into any group and environment without arousing any suspicion concerning his or her hidden agenda. This person is like the American chameleon, a lizard who has the ability to change his skin color rapidly to blend into the environment that it's in. But the human version of this chameleon is even more treacherous, for it has the ability to change its personality in the twinkling of an eye. If that will further its aims and goals and to achieve it, now that person will use any device or take any action in order to conceal his main objective. And in so doing, he will mislead you and he'll deceive you in order to accomplish that. And Jesus Christ had a name for these individuals and he referred to them as hypocrites. He referred to them as hypocrites because they were two-faced individuals because their lives were filled with deceitfulness and hypocrisy. For Jesus said that these people honor him with their lips, but their heart was far from him. But their actions will not go unnoticed by the all-seeing eyes of God. And therefore, there are no secrets hidden from God. For Jesus tells us in the 12th chapter of St. Luke and the 2nd and 3rd verses, The time is coming when everything will be revealed. All that is secret will be made public. Whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light. And what you have whispered behind closed doors will be shouted from the housetops for all to hear. And it's very important that you realize the importance of not mocking God with your actions. For in the sixth chapter of Galatians and the seventh and eighth verses, we are warned, be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And to be the object of God's wrath is something you don't want to experience. For if there is anything to fear in life, it would be to be the recipient of God's punishment. For Jesus tells us in the 12th chapter of St. Luke in the 4th and 5th verses, Dear friends, don't be afraid of those who want to kill you. They can only kill the body. They cannot do any more to you. But I'll tell you whom you should fear. Fear God, who has the power to kill people and then throw them into hell. But why is it? that people continue to live in sin when the consequences of sin is presented to them. For in the fourth chapter of St. James in the 17th verse, we are told, remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. And of course we know that the wages of sin is death, which means a spiritual death, an eternal banishment from the very presence of God. Then knowing these facts, why do so many people choose eternal damnation over eternal salvation with God? For God sent a light into the world, a light that would show them the way to God. And that light was God's Son, Jesus Christ. But many, many people reject that light. And in rejecting the light of Jesus Christ, they damned their souls to hell. Well, the reason they chose this path to follow is revealed to us in the third chapter of St. John and the 16th 
through the 21st verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. There is no judgment awaiting those who trust him, but those who do not trust him have already been judged for not believing in the only Son of God. Their judgment is based on this fact. The light from heaven came into the world, but they loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. They hate the light because they want to sin in the darkness. They stay away from the light for fear their sins will be exposed and they will be punished. But those who do what is right come to the light gladly so everyone can see that they are doing what God wants. And if you were to take a critical assessment of your life, in what category would you place yourself? Are you one that hides from the light or one who moves toward the light? Are you doing or participating in something that you would be ashamed and embarrassed to be seen doing in the light of day? And if you are doing something late at night that would cause you great pain, suffering, and humiliation if it became public knowledge, then why are you doing it? Is it because during these late and very early hours, you feel that darkness of night will act as a shield and cover that will hide your secret life of sin? And no one will know your secret. And if that is what you truly and sincerely believe, then you are in for a tremendous a surprise. Because the night has a thousand eyes and nothing is hidden that will not be revealed. For if one continues to sin, eventually those sins will be made known to and seen by the eyes of men. But more importantly, they will be seen by the all-seeing and probing eyes of God. And the consequences of your sins that's made known to a holy God will result in God's judgment upon your life. For in the second chapter of Romans, in the 16th verse, it says, The day will surely come when God by Jesus Christ, will judge everyone's secret life. And as surely as night follows day and day follows night, each of us will stand before Jesus Christ and be judged for the things we have done during our lifetime. For in 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter and the 10th verse, it tells us, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. And in one way or another, all secret sins will be revealed. And three of the most famous cases illustrating this point has taken place over the last 17 years. And during that time, it involved three very prominent religious figures. And their names were Jim Baker, Jimmy Swaggart, and Jesse Jackson. Here were three religious giants who were at the peak of their careers, and yet sin brought about their downfall. And for many Christians, 